Good afternoon, everybody, um, and good afternoon as well to the viewers and those who are tuning in online. My name is Ati Mete, and I am the Chief Fire Igniter, the Chief Catalyst, and the Talent Alchemist, and I welcome you today to our first show titled Build Your Business. I am super excited about this opportunity to have you all online and connected and tuning into our first episode of Build Your Business. And I'm also excited as well to the guests that we have in studio. Um, super excited about the content that we have, um, that we've planned for our audience, newcomers as well that are coming in on board. And also, I'd like to have a series, like a big shout out, send a shout out to my family that is tuning in right now. Shout out to the better family that are connected in the BAM family. Thank you so much, family, for your support and encouraging me to go on with this. And yeah, before I continue and go further on, um, we have an awesome, a sensational, special guest that we have here today, who happens not only to be my spiritual father, but um, he happens as well to be a great man of God who's been in business. And shortly I will read his bio. Good afternoon, Apostle Ezekiel Chamala. You're welcome today. Good afternoon, Hati. How are you doing, my daughter? God I'm bless good, you. Indeed. I'm good, <laughs> Apostle. Your video, your excellence that you are exuding on your um, on your platform, it's like putting me to shame. <laughs> I need to level up. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's all Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Apostle, you. any... Yes, Apostle. So any shout-outs, any greetings that you'd like to do this afternoon before we get on to the show? I'm going to greet all the, the, the viewers and God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. I'm very yeah. excited and actually, and I also thank God to have this privilege to actually be with you here and share uh, the little experience we're going to have to share today. So thank you okay. so much for tuning in and also remaining and watching until the end and uh, god bless you thank you thank you apostle so thank you so much one small man of god for your time um i know you're very busy and there's a lot of activities that you're currently busy with at this point in time so it's truly an honor and i think for me personally as well um starting off i wanted to make sure that i started off this show and this episode in the right segment i think foundations are very important in laying the found, right foundation whenever you're starting and kick starting something off so as i've mentioned earlier on the show is called build your business which will be taking place every Thursday from, mon um, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And the whole idea is to bring in guests who are captain leaders, pathfinders and pioneers and captains of industries as well, where we'll be discussing on entrepreneurial empowerment topics, sharing back best practices and learning new business skills and tools and the nitty gritty of successful running of a business. And um, I thought that we should take a things um, on a different twist today, rather than bringing, um, you know, initially from the onset entrepreneurs already running their businesses, I decided, you know, that we should bring in fathers, you know, and set the foundation right, as I've mentioned earlier on, from the topics and teachings from a kingdom perspective. Um, before I get on to that and why you hear about the show, I just wanted to quickly read the bio about Apostle Ezekiel Chamala so that we understand who our guest is today. Um, Apostle, as I've mentioned, Apostle Ezekiel is an apostle. He's a kingdom a business pioneer in the marketplace and a general overseer of the Lord is My God Ministries with the branch main quarters in Randbeck, Johannesburg in South Africa and also in the DRC as well. He's also the general overseer of the Transformation Life Center, a Christian-based, um, drug-based rehabilitation center outside in Hegbord, which is 60 kilometers outside of Johannesburg. He is married to Prophetess Esther Chamala. Greetings, Prophetess. And together they've been blessed by the Lord with three beautiful children. And he, with the background in different ministerial areas, such as healing, deliverance, and teaching, and with the mandate of raising leaders within the fivefold, fivefold, made up of pastors, prophets, and evangelists, he is a seasoned, revelatory preacher of the word with a vision and an anointing that transcends true generations. He's also a prolific uh, kingdom author, 
and he has written success um, written and successfully published four books till date and i happen to have one of the books which is going to be one of our topics of conversation the ghost in the marketplace and these books is written, of course, through the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he is finalizing two more new books, which will be released before the end of June. He's an astute business and a seasoned businessman with an extensive background in the mining and commodity sector. And because of the call of God, he had to leave the marketplace and get into ministry full time. And as a result of his strong business and commercial acumen and background, he raises up and mentors business leaders and captains of industry industries. He's a visioneer and pioneer of Bush Forum, a platform that was created to raise um, to raise emerging and scaling kingdom entrepreneurs. He therefore mentors and coaches, captains of industries, those in corporate and business leaders as well. Such a mouthful and truly an honor to have you here, Apostle, once more again. Um, Apostle, without wasting much time, please tell us about yourself. Who are you? For somebody who doesn't know you, and connecting on the radio show for the first time today. Who is Apostle Ezekiel Chavala? Uh, first of all, thank you so much again one more time for the privilege and thank you to the actually Radio Agape FM online radio and uh, the hosts of it. And I just, uh, we just thank you and, uh, and we thank God as well for the privilege and the honor as well. Apostle Ezekiel is just as you've mentioned uh, in details, but uh, uh, I, I believe Apostle Ezekiel is just an apostle uh, of Jesus Christ after the will of God. And it happened also that we have actually received the privilege to be raised in the marketplace and to actually grow up in actually doing business. And, uh, and we never thought that the Lord will actually uh, bring this to a very high mountain to a high scale. So, <laughs> as you just say, the uh, Apostle Ezekiel is a pioneer. He's also a prolific author. He's a leader, a strategist, a leader of a, of a, of a, <clears throat> of the Lord is my God ministry. The general overseer and the senior pastor, and the, of the Lord is my God ministry international and also mm -hmm. the, the general overseer of uh, uh, TLC, a Transformation Life Center, Rehab Center. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. Ezekiel also is a businessman, but it's one side of the business that we don't really most of the time like to portray because mm -hmm. we are more actually deep into ministry and actually uh, helping uh, the people uh, also to be able to actually uh, 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 do uh, business uh, uh, from the kingdom perspective as Thank well. You. So mm -hmm. coach as well. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't like the word coach. I, I love. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I love the word mentor. I, mm -hmm. I love to mentor and I love to see people being successful in everything that they do. I love Absolutely. to impart impact with the spirit that the Lord has actually uh, bestowed upon me, the grace actually that has mm -hmm. been actually bestowed upon me. So uh, this is Apostle Ezekiel. He's also a, a married man. He's married to a beautiful yeah. wife and prophetess Esther, a very powerful woman, and also uh, a father to actually uh, three children and also uh, uh, a father to many 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 in ministry and apostle ezekiel also is actually raises leaders uh, in the fivefold ministry pastors prophets mm -hmm. and uh, even apostles teachers and uh, you've seen that and you've experienced that in the ministry mm -hmm. we have uh, Absolutely. a lot of pastors and we have uh, a lot of uh, prophets as well teachers as well mm -hmm. and some of them that mm -hmm. i see along the way uh, so uh, this is all about Apostle Ezekiel, and you've said it um, mm -hmm. already. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, this is uh, all about Apostle Ezekiel. 
Very colorful and wonderful. Thank you once more, Apostle, for the beautiful intro and telling us about yourself. Now, Apostle, I think in our conversation, and I mean, we get to speak a lot in terms of business and the things um, more so from the COVID perspective and your guidance, and as you've said, the mentoring from a business perspective in the marketplace. And with COVID-19, I believe that it birthed an unprecedented difference across all spheres of life, especially as well in the marketplace in terms of business. And I believe that the way of business has been um, and has been disrupted and and is continued to be disrupted. And hence, that's the reason that I believe that I needed to bring you as an apostolic father into the studio, just to speak from the kingdom perspective, as you've mentioned, how do we build right? How do we build according to the blueprint of God? Because clearly, even some of the best of us who are experts in our field, you know, whatever field you might be operating in, be it you're running a bakery, be it you're running a consulting firm, somehow we got hit by COVID. And we've come to a point Point now many people do not know how to move forward but before we get there I wanted to find out from you from a business perspective because I understand that you've got a very strong background when it comes to business you've been mining um, you've traveled across Africa from a business perspective um, do you mind sharing more to us about that your journey in, in from a business perspective and the things that you've learned as well from a marketplace that you feel that might be valuable sharing with your audience today Oh, thank you very much. First of all, you know, uh, I was born in the marketplace and brought in, is in the marketplace. You know, my my father and my mother actually uh, were businessmen, business, very successful business people. And it happened that they also had to do the same thing that I did. I actually uh, quit ministry, uh, I mean, quit business for ministry, according to the will of yeah. God. I, you know, uh, I grew up in business, you know. It is uh, the marketplace that that paid my school fees at the marketplace wow. that raised me. So my mother, I've got a very strong background in business, and my my grandfather first was a businessman, and he 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 among his children. So my mother happened to actually rise up and take that actually uh, uh, heritage, you know, from him mm -hmm. and become even more. Uh, very more bolder and more bold and very uh, strong and powerful woman and mm -hmm. in, in business, I mean, in trading and she was able to travel, you know, in different countries yeah. as well to make sure that she actually uh, um, was able to do uh, business. So we were raised in that and we were taught business. And so it's something which is actually uh, uh, something uh, which is inerrant. It's an, actually a, an inerrant gift. Like we're born, we're born, it's in the blood. We're before, you know, because you learn business sometimes from from school, you know, of course, uh, mm -hmm. we've learned a lot. <laughs> we are so exposed to knowledge and we're exposed to many things, we're exposed to books and we're exposed to colleges, exposed to many things. But before, you know, that was something that was really inerrant means we're, we're really born with it because we're born in it and then we we experience that we have been taught how to do business as well especially in trading you know yes. and you know marketing so uh i've this is my experience and you know when i begin to to grow up and become older and uh, starting i uh, starting taking actually steps of business, I come to realize that there was a lot of opportunity. I was exposed to a lot of opportunities, you know, yeah. into business, you know. That's why it happened for me to be able to 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 actually uh, uh, hone some few businesses that have actually were able to shut down. You know, uh, I used to own a, uh, even a, a mining company that were on the verge of actually uh, trying to start the production in Tanzania, Morogoro. We were actually selling uh, precious stones like rubies and all these things. And we, we had a company in, in South Africa here, precisely in Pretoria. We had a joint venture mm -hmm. with Gerard and Marcus, and it was a huge company. So Gerard was a, a man who was actually uh, uh, very strong in the market of actually in the trading of uh, stones and selling precious stone diamonds, sapphires. So, used to work even with the Queen Elizabeth. She would sell 
stones to her. So it was actually something very huge. And uh, when the call, the calling came, and the Lord actually told me that I had to quit everything and just to focus on Him because He had called me to be a, mm. a, also a pioneer to this generation. And, you know, so I had to look up to the ministry and actually uh, receive that grace that could be able to impact people and do business from the kingdom perspective. perspective. Because yeah. One thing to do business from the word perspective in the kingdom, there's just two different things. So the Lord said that I took you into that. I gave you all these things so that you can be able to uh, be a blessing to others and share your experience and impact others with mm -hmm. the gift that is actually bestowed upon you. So that's why I, I, I left, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's very powerful. I think that's very powerful, Apostle, because, you know, many a times we come into churches, we sit in church pews, but you find that there's no particular focus when it comes to those who are in marketplace. We step into the Babylons with have no idea how to function in Babylon. And yet the Bible says that go ye out into the world in Matthew 28 verse 18. But we go there ill-equipped and not properly armored and then we collapse. And I think COVID was that big rude awakening for us that we were not well equipped as kingdom premiers, as Christian entrepreneurs years to fully function you know during these disruptive times now what i wanted to find out from you apostle because you juggle so much in your life you are involved you know from a ministry perspective full time you mentioned that there's a drug rehabilitation center that you look after in um there are sons and, and daughters that just sit under you that you mentor in business space in the bush forum how do you find a balance in your life um, because I think balance is very key with everything that you're doing right now. Um, how do you find that balance and also find that balance for the time of, for God as well? Uh, well, actually, the balance comes from uh, uh, the relationship and uh, actually a partnership perspective because mm -hmm. it's actually the balance comes when you have a right uh, partners and right people who can Absolutely. be able to help you actually fulfill the vision you have and the mandate that is given to you, you know, fulfill. So the balance comes actually through a partnership relationship. And uh, one of the great uh, partnership is uh, actually the person I'm married to, my wife. You know, she's a very, she, she's an amazing woman because it takes actually a, a, a good wife to actually be able to help you uh, fulfill what you are called to fulfill. Agreed. Uh, yes. I believe that she's a good partner and she helped me a lot by actually giving me the opportunity to pushing me to actually do more and giving me the opportunity as well to do what I do, multiple tasks at the time without yeah. even actually uh, having time to you know, it's two different things. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that others that are, are, are not able to do it, they have. Uh, they mm -hmm. don't have the opportunity to have good partners. But for me, it's a privilege to have a, a wife who will give you the opportunity to do things. A lot, a lot of things at the time. It takes time. That means that it takes her time. It takes my time. But she's mm. actually all. She's involved in all, and and, and she has I love been that apostle me you know to actually do that you guys have experienced that in the church how we do work you know so uh so i believe that it comes from that actually a uh, perspective from her uh, uh, partnership and relationship and you, so you need to have right partner and good people around you also the team that i've actually was able to build as well that are actually helping me and giving uh, i facilitate the task for me you know, to be able to manage everything because you cannot be able to do all these things without a good partnership, a good team leaders that you've actually impacted and, and give the ability to, to help you, you know. So I love that, Apostle. Speed, you know, he's actually how our, our yeah. partnership is. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't start everything by himself. He first went for partners mm -hmm. who are uh, 
apostles and leaders and he trained them so they could be able to bear the burden and help him as well to actually build and fulfill actually uh, the vision he had. So um, the partner number one is my wife and then I have other partners and my leaders and my team that I was able to build uh, uh, throughout the years. That's certainly powerful, Apostle. Um, anyone who's out there definitely listening in is that partnerships are very core. Cool. And I think like, I love what you said, which is very profound, that who you marry is very important. They need to have the capability, the ability to be able to bear the weight, to bear the burden as well. Um, the fact that, you know, sometimes you're not going to be at home and they need to carry off with the home stuff and all of that. It's very important. The person you marry can make or break the purpose that God has called you into very powerful apostle and also your partnerships surrounding yourself with the right people who are going to help you to build the vision and move the vision forward absolutely yeah. powerful i think that's quite key to our audience as well that you need to ensure who is in your circle from a partnership perspective maritally as well and also within the teams and the relationships that you have as well apostle moving on i mean you are a man of excellence and my next question to you is that what drives you what pushes you so much in life in terms of the purpose that god has given you from the time that you were in business and even in ministry um and with all that you have currently on your plate what drives you what are those core things and the values that drives you as an individual former businessman and also as a man of god in ministry mentoring men and women that are in business as well i'm driven by purpose <laughs> well that's my name. It's the title of your next book. <laughs> I'm driven by vision. Yes. Sir. And by purpose. vision is the key, you know, mm -hmm. to everything, you know. So I have a vision and uh, I'm driven by that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, Proverbs says, King Solomon said, where there's no vision, people perish, you know. 100%. So it's impossible for me to perish. And. Mm -hmm. Uh, while I still have a vision. So every time I look at the vision, uh, I, I, the vision that God has actually given unto me. Mm. So uh, I'm actually encouraged, you know. I am, uh, you know, um, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm more uh, like um, pushed to hit and uh, really uh, ignited in my, my soul and my spirit to really uh, run, you know, mm -hmm. run and to, 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 and looking at the time as well and looking at the vision, I, I, yeah. I really don't have much time. So I'm driven by that. I'm just driven by, by vision. I'm driven by purpose. And this has brought me into a place of hard work. You yes, know, I, there are things that are, there, there are things that I want to achieve. These are, there's a mountain that I want to reach. So uh, it takes uh, uh, a vision in order for you to, to really get there. So my strength is the vision that God has bestowed upon me and the purpose that he has given unto me. So I'm driven by, by that. Absolutely powerful, men of God. You know, you, you touch on core things again. You talk about purpose. You talk about vision. And I'm sitting and thinking now for somebody who's an entrepreneur who, who had a vision, you know, wanted to start out, but they started off great. And because of COVID, whatever circumstances they might have passed through, what sort of encouragement would you give to somebody who's sort of given up on that vision, on that purpose that used to be like a burning driver and that made them to be inspired to wake up every morning to do things? And that purpose and vision, it doesn't drive them, it doesn't propel them anymore. How would you go about encouraging? Uh, you know, um, what I would actually say to to encourage the people who have been through uh, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, pandemic and all of us, mm -hmm. we've been through that. And yes, uh, the question is what were we able to do in order for us to to stand and, you know, to be, to still continue, you know, what we're doing. The, mm -hmm. What I would or I actually encourage the people, the first thing that we did actually, we, we didn't accept to quit, you know, despite that. you know so uh mm -hmm. one of the thing is like i want to tell the people that they they, they his power 
in creativity in power in yeah. building and in renovation your innovation mm -hmm. i mean so you mm -hmm. know uh, one thing that i believe is like uh, if you want to be very successful or you want to be successful in what you're doing you need to actually uh have uh, that spirit of uh, creativity and always apt to build and to yeah. innovate you know yeah so i'm looking at how god did it for me you know uh what i do in business i teach i teach people how you do business with god you know so mm. i'm looking at god as my model looking at jesus like, wow. as my model. you know what mm -hmm. god was able to do because one thing that i have happened with the covid it was like you know it came to to blow away everything you know yes and yes huge very very difficult predicament it looks like after the time that we have been in we've been locked in you know and locked down you know so 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 it was like uh something they have been destroyed and yes. it was like uh everything actually had to start from zero because it was a lot of time spent into the lockdown so it brought me back to what the Lord did in the beginning, you know, when he, the world was destroyed, you know, mm -hmm. the deluge came, the rain of 40 days and 40 nights wiped everything away. So that was a kind of uh, thing that we've experienced. A lot of people have lost their jobs and lost uh, their businesses. Yeah. You know, even some of people lost their marriages. It was a lot of stuff, you know. Yes, yeah, a uh, huge collapse. Jobs, it, it was a huge collapse. It was the whole world uh, actually collapsing. But one thing is uh, that the Spirit of the Lord actually gave me as a revelation as what the Lord did. Even mm -hmm. though everything collapsed, I believe that we still remain with something that we could use actually to get back again into the field, to get back mm -hmm. again the space because you realize that God was very strategic when he actually destroyed the whole world. He kept at least eight souls. Hallelujah. Mm. Kept eight souls. And uh, after the deluge, he asked them to go out of the, 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 the boat and start recreating, you know, mm. that's where you see uh, uh, the creative, ability is very essential and very demanding especially in the time where a lot of people have lost so our mind had to be set for creativity we yes. have to create you know we had to recreate mm -hmm. God so 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 now uh, uh, I believe that even though we've been through what we've been through we still remain with something if we have nothing in the hand, we remain with a purpose. We never lost the vision. We never lost the purpose. I hear and you. Okay. You yeah. can lose everything. But if you still have the purpose, you can be able to actually get back again into the game. So I believe that there's something that you have. Something mm. you remain with that you can use to get yourself back into the 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 place again the space the, game, again. the space again the i love game. it <laughs> that is so powerful apostle again because god was very strategic we have to be very strategic we can't just leave absolutely like when every you know every time sometimes this crisis comes sometimes to open up our mind you know to set up for something greater than what we had before because now you think now your mind is actually is is is, is is moving into another expansion you know you you start thinking differently you know no you know mm -hmm. so, so and we're looking at everything that could be destroyed but if our foundation was strong i believe that everything would be destroyed but our foundation could still be strong i don't know what is your foundation but if you have your foundation you can still build again the power of creativity is very important for an entrepreneur mm -hmm. an entrepreneur he's a creator he's a builder as in he's a, an innovator. So you have to actually uh, move into that particular place whereby you can establish yourself everywhere you go. 
no matter the crisis, you still have something that you can do that can take you back again into the game. So God revealed that to us and say, oh, it's, it's all good. I have eight souls and through eight souls, I will have 7.5 billion actually people on earth. Population, this is yes. How do you explain that? So we still have something that can take us back there and move us yes. again. Then actually, then, then before. So this one thing, question is, uh, ask yourself a question, what have I remained with? What do I, I have? It. That can I absolutely love it. it. <laughs> Be able to say that everything was taken away from me i have nothing i don't know where to start how you don't know if you don't know have way to say you have a mind you have your, yes. your your intelligence your wisdom and you also have a purpose and your vision and nothing can be able to kill your vision the deluge didn't kill the vision of god the vision is still going word mm. destroy god kept his vision hallelujah so you understand that we have to actually work like our maker, do things like our maker. So God hey. is the Lord. in the marketplace. I love it. It yeah. brought this out there. Noah, you know, and the Bible says that he had the vineyard. He get back, he back, got back in the gate, mm -hmm. and he actually mm -hmm. tested first uh, his first uh, uh, success. Harvest, the yes, the harvest. First harvesting the wine, and this yes. one was amazing. So, so you see that God got him back again because he kept him. As long as you're still alive, you know, uh, all things are possible, you know. And <laughs> you, you have purpose, you can get back into the game. You know, it's just... A I, love, I absolutely love Apostle, you're dropping I major, major stuff. <laughs> you're dropping bombs, do not quit yeah. creativity. And you talk yeah. about the creativity and also reinventing, the power of reinventing. It means yeah. that you need yeah. to go back to the, or the blueprint. And yeah. the blueprint is God, going back to God, what said, God told you in the secret place. So the it's about what God said to you. Never <laughs> Do not quit. <laughs> It never disappears. If you get back, you go out there and something happens, go back to hit again. And, yeah. You know, something can still happen, you know. So mm. powerful words of encouragement to anybody right now who might have been sitting and feeling like, you know, I, I, I can't move from here. I've lost everything. I've lost. I've shut down my office. I've lost my cars, my assets, etc. Whatever that you felt that you might lost. This is a very powerful encouragement that go back to the original blueprint. Go back to what God told you when you were in the secret room with him, because that's where you come up with all these things, the creativity, the power to reinvent. And I'll, you said something so powerful, Apostle, as well, that God being our model, you build according to God's model and God being your role model and Christ being your role model. And it's so powerful you're saying that because we're living in times, men of God, where we are so influenced, at, at times are like influencing by the world through social media and all of these things. And there's a lot of different types of role models, be it from a good perspective mm -hmm. or a bad one, depending how one's to look at it from the context and you say something that you've made God your role model you keep you build according to role God's model and um, powerful apostle yeah he, I'm looking at time and I don't want us to get lost and it is powerful to go you know, through your book I, 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 absolutely I, I, powerful <laughs> I like to do you know I don't I don't give up easily you know I'm a I'm a crazy crazy yeah. crazy dude when it comes for uh, accomplishing and fulfilling and get things done you know i go crazy and i go beyond actually uh, yeah. uh my, my ability and my capacity because i do believe that all things are possible and we can do all things through christ who strengthens us from a kingdom Amen. perspective even us that ability that you know uh, christ in us is the hope of glory and so yes. we can do things you know so uh, my encouragement is like, you know, uh, is as uh, to use what you have. You can mm -hmm. use, you have something, but you have relationship, but you have a vision. And one thing is like, maybe, you know, you have the blueprint, you have your, your business plan, you have your vision and all yes. these things that you have, you know, work it out again and, and start believing God and start looking for people who can be able to invest into that particular business plan that you have because it's mm -hmm. it's free to, to to have a business plan you, you, yes. it's free 
brighter vision, you know. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> difficult in that. And, you know, so I believe that the most important thing to do now is to use what we have. Remember yes. this woman in, this, in the book of Second Kings chapter 4, she was a, 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 a wife to a prophet who passed away and left her in terrible debt, you know. And uh, the, 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 the debt were actually coming to collect the kids into slavery, you know, taking them into slavery. And she cried when she saw the prophet. And the prophet yes. asked her a question, what have I have to do with you, woman? And what shall I do for you? She said, my husband, your servant, uh, died and he left me in terrible debts. And uh, she started explaining the prophet the problems yes. that you have. she had. But the prophet returned the question and he said, what do you have? So what that do you I, have? Yes, what do you have? She had something that she neglected. She, when wow. she said that a portion of oil is there, and you know, a portion of oil, and she never even thought that out of that oil, God could actually brought back or take her back into the marketplace or take her into the marketplace, you know, and mm -hmm. make her man again, you know. So she said, I have a hoid. And the prophet says, okay, uh, I want you to go out there and borrow some vessels and come with those vessels and enter into your room and shut down the door and you're going to experience the miracle and fill up the oil and stuff like that. So yeah. you realize actually the miracle came, you know, through what she had. So, uh, you know, sometimes when there's chaos like this, when there is yeah. like this, you know, all we need is we're looking for is a miracle. So yeah. some a miracle will come through what you have. So you need to be able to use, to use, using what you have. To identify first, one needs to, to identify, identify, go back and then look, what do you have? You have something that you don't know that is very powerful. You know, sometimes we have mm. relationships really neglect in our lives. We have people that we neglect, we are afraid to talk yes. to. You know, yes. we have people that we can really take you on a high panko, you know, into business or into any particular domain or field, you know. But we do neglect mm -hmm. those things. So maybe I'm trying to remind somebody here to first identify, as you just said, as you stated, mm -hmm. uh, what they have. What do they have that can take them there? You may mm -hmm. not have something. You can have, a, you have an inspiration. Maybe you have a... A vision, you have a purpose, maybe you have a business plan, you know, use that. Use it. Mm. Get yourself to uh, seeking uh, to uh, uh, relationship and find the right people, you know, the right place, and, you know, at the right time. And, uh, and you will be able to get back again into the game. So I just gave you a, the, the word about what God was able to do. He used what he kept, you know. So obviously you kept something, use it, use it. We all face, we all, what do you have? We all went, that's where the miracle all, is, yeah. We all went through a lot, you know, even from the ministerial perspective, kingdom, yes, church. Yes, such a shutdown. Mm. So we believed God, you know, we protected what we had, the leader we had, we believed that if we're going to rise up with this, God would take us somewhere. And here we are. Here we are, and and my encouragement is that they use what you have. I don't know what you really have in your hand, but use what you have. Use what you Take have. Take whatever you have. So be it a business plan that might have you neglected, you wrote it down somewhere, something that God whispered to you in your time of solitude and your prayer, and you thought that, how do I start? And I believe that's very powerful, Apostle, what you've said, that do not quit. The creativity will come back when you really connect back to what the blueprint that God had initially given you. Um, and also the relationships as well. The relationships, the right context that God might have established that you might have neglected. So basically, it's a time to identify, re-evaluate and revisit. Talk to people, get your business plan there and... Uh and uh, get your business back on a run and start calling mm -hmm. people. You know, I mean, I just engendered a couple of days. Like uh, I was talking to somebody uh, and I was praying with the person and I say that the Lord has actually told me, somebody who have actually got discouraged 
from uh, uh, from uh, doing business anymore because there's a lot of things that have happened, you know, mm-hmm. and the Lord put that in my heart and to tell the person and say, get back again into the game and God is going to open doors for you. And the mm-hmm. person just business ma- the business plan and begin to actually send the business plan to different people and uh, seeking for contract in different companies, you know, until the person was able to receive a positive response and the person did not have the money and they called and I, I was able to coach the person and speak to the person what to do in order to get the money. And at the end of the day, speaking, the person who was able to experience actually that miracle to have the money to mm-hmm. get the done. And it was the courage and, you know, that she, the, the person had and the, 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 the help that I, she, she received from me by giving her, uh, the encouraging her, praying with her, mm-hmm. and telling her to do it again. It's from zero that she actually, she started. So, but she had a business plan in mean, the person. I hope our plan. audience is taking notes, Apostle, because you are dropping a lot of major key nuggets, which I think are very valuable. And especially for those entrepreneurs who might have quit their businesses, have collapsed due to COVID, and they don't know how to go back into the game again. You were saying very powerful you stuff. Yeah. Business and you stop doing business because of uh, the, the, the chaos and the crisis, then you're not called to do business. <laughs> because a businessman... Don't quit, you know. And this I've learned from my mother. She never quit, you know. Yeah. So you, if something failed, you get you still have something else that you can do. You know, a businessman you, something else. you, you yeah. quit and you just go sit back at home, then you're not called to that, you know. So you can't quit. You have to keep going, keep doing, no matter the failures, no matter whatever, you're gonna get to success. Mm-hmm. You Absolutely. can never to succeed if you Apostle, never not to cut you. <laughs> not to cut you up, Apostle, you've written four books already and I mean, Ghost in the Marketplace, I believe I'm reading it for the third or fourth time right now. And I'm stuck on page 14. I want to quickly read that section where it says that there are a lot of people on earth who are trying to succeed through their own abilities, which is unfortunately impossible. The world has systems, and if you're not able to submit to those systems that drives the marketplace, that is why it's very important for a businessman or a woman to understand the system and the competition before entering the marketplace. Please unpack that for me, Apostle, in the next five minutes. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we understand this. Uh that uh, the word is actually uh, been controlled by systems, you know. For you to be successful into something, you have to belong to a system, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and according to the what you just mentioned that I've written in the book, it's an understanding that I've received, you know, from what is happening when what have happened the crisis that takes place into the world yes. and how do we do we we able to to deal with that and uh, biblically speaking you know uh the word has system as you listen for example marketplace there are systems yeah. that ruling really marketplace you know if you cannot be able to understand those systems and just go there uh without actually uh assessing and trying to know how you're going to position yourself it's going to be very difficult for you to be successful you know i remember paul going into the marketplace with uh with uh with stylus and uh when they get uh, into the marketplace there was a woman who was actually having the spirit of divination in the marketplace that she was actually giving yes. people chances mm-hmm. to be safe in the market and they were doing yes. that in extra money and stuff like that and when paul saw and she sold them and she said these are the servants of the most high who came to show us the way to salvation and paul perceived that the spirit that was speaking into her was not a genuine spirit that was operating mm. in the market so he commanded the spirit to leave her you know mm. so the spirit departed and she was set free and this spirit, the woman had the spirit of Python, you know. So the spirit mm-hmm. of Python, spirit that actually swallowed and vomit, you know, uh, things, you know, like the, the Python yes. nature, 
it swallowed something and then after that it vomited. It's just suffocated, it's suffocated, yeah. Take things from others and give it to, mm. to others, you know. So things like that that happen in the market, it's really happened to be a blockage to many people. And we yeah. saw Paul actually uh, cursing about Jesus who came into the marketplace at the governmental level. The pro council wanted to hear the word of God, but about Jesus trying to stop him, you know. So Paul came and actually uh, uh, cursed the man and blind him, and you know, and the man was taken out of that place. So you realize that these are these are these are things that happen in the marketplace that causes a lot of blockage to people who are ignorant about yes. the fact that the marketplace is also a spiritual place, you know. And we saw that mm. even Jesus that when he came to uh to the sea uh of tiberius i believe where the 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 the, the disciples were actually uh, fishing that was a business that was a marketplace it was a business place you know so when he came there and the bible says that the, he, he he find peter and all his partners who was actually working and they were toning the whole night and they never catch even one fish. There was a huge crisis in the marketplace. Mm. So he came to them and say, come, let me, uh, come join me and let's go get some fish, you know? So they took them into a deep place, you know, where they were able to cast their net and catch some fishes, you know? Mm -hmm. And for that, I, I've read, it's written there, uh, the Bible says that Jesus Christ went to the mountain of prayer. He went to mm -hmm. pray after praying and asked the disciple to actually proceed and go on to the other side. And when they were on the, in the middle of the sea, the, the boat was tossed with wind and they were stuck in the middle of the sea. It was in the night. And he, the Bible says they saw him walking on the water and they were surprised and say, this is a ghost, this is not a man. And then when he came, he mm. came to, to closer to the boat. He came to the person who was concerned, Peter, you know. And Peter, when Peter saw him, he said, Master, if he's, it is you, command me to come. And he said, yeah, come. And uh, Peter was able to step out of the boat and walk on the water, you know. So, uh, and then after that, when the wind came, he started sinking, you know, and the, the Jesus pulled him out. He taught him, actually, how do you actually deal, how, what do you do when you actually operate in the marketplace? You just don't mm. come, otherwise you stay here the whole night and not be able to do anything because you're ignorant of a truth, a reality that you could actually put in practice that actually could uh, bring a great success because you show them that I went to <laughs> pray and I'm walking over the water. I went to pray, then I came uh, here. I was able to, 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 to know the right place where to yes. go to, to have the revelation of the right people, the right place, yes. and time. So maybe the time was not the night. The place mm. was not fasting. So I'm teaching you, giving you a master class that you cannot do it by yourself. You need a Absolutely. super hour. You need us to do and business, you know, power, you know, to be able to overcome and for to be able to be successful in the marketplace. So he absolutely, man of God, <laughs> how to do it. So they were able to actually do it very easily. So, and I believe that this is one thing that I would tell the people, for, especially from the kingdom perspective. You know, yes, it's not easy in the marketplace. I've been in the marketplace all my life. You know. I know the realities and see the things that we've actually Absolutely. So uh, very powerful I'm, men of God. We are very, we are running out of time and there's so much to talk. Um, we've not even gone through mono, most of our questions that we've prepared for today. But I love what you said, and I believe that it's going to be a word that lingers to many right now and drops in their spirit as well, that the marketplace is a spiritual place um, and not to take it by face value, but from a spiritual component. I'm, Pastor, before we round up, <laughs> before we round up, I know we're so excited. Um, with kingdom principles, if you want to mm -hmm. be successful in the marketplace, align yourself with kingdom principles. 
You understand? You know, align yourself mm. with with God's principle, the Word's principle mm -hmm. when you do business, mm -hmm. and you you'll be very successful. You know, so you know you 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 cannot be in the marketplace and not be able to be actually a. Uh, to be to 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 be a, a kingdom uh actually a blesser let's say i'm going to give you a simple example of peter peter was able to bless jesus christ with this boat mm -hmm. jesus used his boat to preach the gospel you know to help the people to bless the poor to feed the poor you know to 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 help the less privileged you know so if you want to be successful in the marketplace as well these are things that you have to do. You have to learn how to, to bless the poor, to bless the community. Your company needs mm. to be an empowerment. It has to be, it has to, to be. Impact. Yes, to yes. impact the society, to impact to nations, impact. yes. Make, Make a difference. Society. Make a difference. You see, we are running a program which is called um, Sponsor Freedom. The Sponsor Freedom is like we move <laughs> into the co corporate space whereby we're trying to bring the corporate people to begin to help because we this program is run based on uh, going down the street and picking up the boys who are under drugs and, and who have lost purpose and all these things and trying to bring them into their rehabilitation center, you know, and yeah. help them heal, retrain them and, and actually give them purpose before they actually get their integration into society. Into so society, you, if, yeah. If, if 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 many people in the corporate can be able to uh, to actually cooperate and align themselves and put themselves onto uh, this project, you know, uh, you see that it will be a blessing. You see, Jesus used yes. the word. Absolutely, Apostle. <laughs> Apostle, thank you so much. So we've completely run out of time, and thank you so much to our audience that has been tuning in. Um, to those who'd like to hear more about you, where do they find you, Apostle? Should they want to partner, be it corporate, they want to partner on your social um, intervention drives, or be it somebody who's interested to purchase your book or want to know more about what you do? How do they get hold of you? You know, my address is 366 Pretoria Avenue. That's my, where my office is, Drenberg. And uh, if you people want to actually have a, a time to, or to have a conversation or a counsel, a mentorship, whatever it is, they can call the number 01002365444. Or they can email as well to info8 uh tlmg ministries dog org and they can send an email and they can book an appointment uh you know through yourself you know as you are there you know you you can book an issue you can book an appointment right we can call the number and Absolutely. meet I can actually be able to Thank you so much, Apostle Lizico, once more from your time. It has been such a great honor. They can go to our Facebook. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the the Lord TLMGM. Is the Lord is my God Ministries. International. Uh, mm -hmm. John Burke, and they can go to our YouTube channel and actually uh, get uh, uh, watch us and, and see what we actually do. Thank you so much again, Apostle, for your time. It has been truly a pleasure. There's so much to share. Definitely want to bring you in and we discuss more the kingdom principles that you talk about, the systems that you've spoken about, and we unpack your book and dissect it into more detail as well. Um, once again, thank you to our listeners. It has been such a great time um, getting you online and tuning in on this first episode. For those who've come in so late, be sure to catch um, the, the recording of the show um, on the www.agapeonlineradio.com. And we are going to be rounding up the show and by playing out with Phil Thompson, Constant Mercies. Thank you and have a blessed day ahead.